Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be, as the title of this home links page implies, subtracting fractions. We are in our home links unit 5, lesson 7. So let's jump right in. It says here that Elijah still had four fifths of his allowance at the end of the month. Then he spent three fifths of his original allowance on a movie ticket and popcorn. How much of Elijah's allowance was left? So before we get started, we need to come up with a strategy for solving this problem. And I use the ruckus strategy for number stories to help guide my thinking. I'm going to reread this problem, underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve it. So let's go again. It says Elijah still had four-fifths of his allowance at the end of the month. Then he spent three-fifths of his original allowance on a movie ticket and popcorn. How much of Elijah's allowance was left? So I reread, I underlined the question, I circled important information. Okay. Ooh, one more bit I should circle the word left, not as in directions, but in what's remaining. Okay. Now, spoiler since this is titled Subtracting Fractions. My action plan is going to be to subtract, okay? Now, before I decide what I want to subtract, I need to figure out what I'm subtracting for. What do I need to find out? When it asks me, fill in the whole box, okay, I should probably put whole in quotation marks, okay? Not fill in the entire box, just tell me what is the whole. And another word for us to think about whole is unit, what am I counting here? Well, I'm counting allowance, which would probably be paid in the form of money. Okay, so I'm really counting money. Okay? So I now need a number model with an unknown. So what am I subtracting? Well, what am I looking for? Okay, I'm looking for numbers. Here's a number, four-fifths. Here's an, another number, three-fifths. So I'm going to be subtracting four-fifths minus three-fifths, and it's going to equal an unknown. Let's say A for allowance. The letter that we write as our unknown is just a place uh, holder, okay, until we figure out the answer. Now, this problem is fairly simple because there are like denominators for the fractions, meaning that they both are counting fifths. So we can just kind of ignore the bottom numbers for a minute, and we're only looking at the top number. So 4 minus 3. Oh, that's painfully easy. It's 1. Okay. So then what is my answer? Well, that would be 1 fifth of his allowance is left over. Now, how much money is that? Well, we don't know because we don't know what he started out with. So let's say, for example, his weekly allowance was, say, $20, okay? If I wanted to know how much a fifth of a, a $20 is, I would just divide 20 into five groups. And that would leave me with four in each group. So $4 is a fifth of his allowance if, say, he got paid $20 a week. But let's say he only got paid $10 a week. I would still divide it by fifths or by five groups so a fifth of his allowance would be two dollars okay so if he started out uh, if he still had four fifths of his allowance left if he started out with twenty dollars four times four would be sixteen and he'd still have sixteen dollars in his pocket but if he started with a ten dollar allowance he'd only have eight dollars in his pocket but that's besides the point okay we now have an answer to my question Four-fifths minus three-fifths equals one-fifth, okay? Let's take a look at some of the uh, straight-up algorithms that just give you the numbers to subtract. Like, for example, number four, eleven-sixths minus four-sixths. And again, all I want to do is look at the top number, the numerator, because my bottom numbers are the same. My denominators are the same, so they are like denominators. So all I have to do is subtract 11 minus 4. Well, 11 minus 4 will give me 7. 7 what? Well, 7 sixths. 
Now I know what you're thinking, but shouldn't I subtract the bottom numbers too? Don't we always subtract numbers? Well, that is confusing because when we see numbers like, say, two halves minus one half, the temptation is to subtract all numbers. So two minus one is one, two minus two is zero. Sometimes kids will give me this answer, one over zero, which is not only isn't a fraction, it's not even a number. Okay, so that doesn't work. I have to only subtract the top number. So really, the 1 as my numerator is correct, but I'm just confused about what it is I'm counting. It's not 1 over 0, it's 1 half. So if I start out with 2 halves, right, and I take away 1 half, right, still have one half left over. Okay, so finally, let's take a look at some of these practice problems down at the bottom. Uh, we've had experience with large digit addition and subtraction before, uh, but they always kind of bring it back into the mix to prompt you uh, to think about these things in case they pop up again, which is very likely. So let's take a look at problem number eight. And again, uh, they've written the problems horizontally just for the sake of space. So let's write this problem out. 46,386 plus 4,205. So I'm going to bring down the 6. 8 plus 5 is 13. Carry the 1. 4. There we go. Eight, er, 6 plus 2 is 8. And then 4 plus 4 is 8. My total is 88,436. No, it's not. Anybody see what I did there? I wrote my problem vertically. However, what you notice is that I lined up the place values incorrectly. And that's why uh, writing uh, the problems vertically is uh, more useful when you're solving large digit addition subtraction problems. Because if you tried to add this in your head while it was a, a number sentence horizontal, you might try to add the 4 in the 10 thousands place for 46,386 to the 4 in the thousands place of 4,205. So let's try that problem again. This time I'm going to line them up right. 46,386 plus 4,205. 6 plus 5 is 11, carry the 10. 1 plus 8 is 9. 3 plus 2 is 5. 6 plus 4 is 10, and carry that 10,000. And it gives me a total of 50,591. So place value is important. It may not seem that way when you're looking at uh, a bunch of numbers, a bunch of digits all in a row, but it is. It carries a lot of weight. Hey, if you have questions about all this, if you're still kind of struggling with how to uh, justify subtracting fractions, or you just can't wrap your head around it all, talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you if you let them know you need help. They're not mind readers. I mean, they're pretty brilliant, you know, but they can't guess whether or not you need help, so tell them. I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, until we meet again, good luck. Have a good day. Thanks.